covering every county. This is your statewide newscast, Arkansas Today. Good afternoon, I'm Mallory Brooks. Thanks for watching Arkansas Today on this Wednesday. And we begin with breaking news this afternoon as U.S. Marshals are looking for two inmates who escaped from the Jefferson County Detention Center. Marshals say they got the call around 4.30 a.m. Caitlin Reardon is live in Jefferson County with the latest on the search. Caitlin. Mallory, we've been down here for about two hours at this point. We're outside of that jail where those inmates did escape from. Um, we had spent a bunch of time actually talking to people who work in the downtown area about what they know or saw or heard about this whole situation. They did say they saw a lot of police activity this morning happening uh, downtown, but they didn't have a lot of information about what was going on. We do know, though, two of those inmates escaped. Um, one of them, Wesley Gullett, who is... One of the inmates who escaped is actually named as the president of the new Aryan Empire. He and Christopher Sanderson, the other inmate from this escape, were both in jail on a federal indictment. That indictment alleged that between May of 2014 and May of 2016, uh, several new Aryan Empire associates had actually um, tried to have somebody murdered and that was an, a confidential informant that the, they were in jail on that indictment. Now, we're still waiting confirmation from the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office as to what happened when these inmates were able to escape. We did hear some scanner traffic that does uh, indicate that the inmates must have escaped sometime between Monday night or we do know they've been missing since July 29th. Of course, we're still waiting on an official statement or some confirmation from the Sheriff de Department where this stands at this point, but we'll sit down here and continue to follow this. Um, you can have the latest updates on Twitter and, of course, in our later newscasts. Mallory reporting in Pine Bluff. I'm Caitlin Reardon. To follow. A fired employee is accused of shooting and killing two former co workers at Walmart. Mar Walmart, rather. Martez Abrams is now facing two murder charges. Rebecca Butcher reports on how neighbors are reacting. I wouldn't expect that from anybody around here. I'm just, I'm totally shocked. Residents in this South Haven apartment complex are in disbelief that someone now charged with two counts of murder was living so close. Just to know that I guess someone lived that close, and you really don't know what people are going through, so I don't know what pushed them over the edge. This man, 39-year-old Martez Terrell Abram, is charged with killing two fellow Walmart employees, the victims Anthony Brown and Brandon Gales. One neighbor who did not want to speak on camera tells me Something seemed off about Abram. The South Haven mayor called the suspect disgruntled in today's conference. We know the suspect was suspended from work following the outcome of a pending investigation. He was in the store and had a knife in his belt and showed it to an employee. And the employee was concerned and called the police department and wished to make a report. Uh, to our knowledge, he did not threaten anybody with it. Authorities confirm Abrams set a fire in the baby section in the Walmart. The suspect had no prior criminal history until this morning's shooting. This is something that could happen in any city in America. It's unfortunate but true that, you know, it's somewhat a sign of the times. And Walmart U.S. President and CEO Greg Forens said in a statement Tuesday afternoon, we feel tragedies like this personally, and our hearts go out to the families of our two associates and the officer who was injured. The Arkansas Attorney General is reaching out to seniors, raising awareness about common scams. That's why today folks gathered at Hempstead Hall in hope for the Rutledge Retiree Resources event. Attorney General Leslie Rutledge met with residents to share tips on how to keep your money and your personal information out of the hands of scammers. Rutledge says her office is working to crack down on robocalls and other kinds. These days, she says email and social media are also used by scammers. Regardless of what the scam is, uh, we want people to learn about those common scams and how they can protect themselves, how they can protect their identity. You can report scams to the Arkansas Attorney General's office at 800-482-8982, the number you see there on your screen. We also have a link on our website. Congressman Bruce Westerman meeting with people in the town of Hope while he's back for a brief visit from Washington. Congressman Westerman took questions about resources for veterans, school safety, and grant availability. The congressman also touched on the recent vote in Washington to raise the debt ceiling and fund the government for the next two years. That 
bill does absolutely nothing to address the root problems of the deficit and what's causing the deficit. That's why I voted against it, and I'll continue to vote against legislation like that uh, that offers no solutions to the problems that uh, caused us to get in the predicaments that we get in. Congressman Westerman plans to visit El Dorado on August 7th. The deadline is fast approaching to apply for disaster relief in the natural state. After historic flooding in the River Valley left many Arkansans with serious damage, FEMA authorized 13 counties in Arkansas to receive federal funding. The deadline to apply is next Wednesday, August 7th, which leaves just over a week to apply. You need to make sure that you do have proof of residence, proof of identification, and um, receipts, photos. Um, any of that will help your claim. To apply, you can call the FEMA helpline or submit a request through FEMA's disaster app. Happening today, a successful launch of an unmanned supply ship headed to the International Space Station. The Russian spaceship blasted off from Russia's space complex, carrying about three tons of food, fuel, and supplies to the space station's six-member crew. The spacecraft will remain at the space station until December. Let's take a look back at this day in history. On this day in 1964, Ranger 7 transmitted pictures of the moon back to the Earth before the American space probe smashes onto the lunar surface. Five years later, the first men set foot on the moon during NASA's Apollo 11 mission. On this day in 1968, the town of Greer's Ferry was incorporated. It's named for the dam and lake that were constructed between 1959 and 1964.